All right. Uh, I'm not going to get into all of the uh, procedural rules that are found in the Code of Virginia and the Constitution of Virginia. We'll deal with those as we go through town council meetings, uh, as we deal with them, but you can get lost in that stuff, and only a lawyer wants to do that stuff anyway. But this is the stuff that's uh, found in the town code and the town charter, and this is uh, probably 90% of what you have to deal with. This is the, the meat and potatoes of uh, getting organized and conducting the meetings. And uh, the mayor probably knows a lot of these better than I do. A lot of you all do too. Chris, you've been on a long time. You know these things. And uh, Gene, I know you do. So you all interrupt me wherever you uh, see that uh, it needs to be filled out or uh, maybe you've gotten something mixed up. Um, um, uh, a rule about the town charter. Uh, the town charter is the town's constitution. Uh, every town and city in the state has one. A few cities do, I mean a few counties do. These are usually urban counties like Arlington. Um, uh, a few, um, Arlington is kind of an anomaly. It uh, operates uh, almost like a um, city, but it is um, really a uh, county, uh, but it has a charter, and uh, what a charter does uh, for the town uh, and uh, everywhere else is a charter, it provides the ground rules. It's a special set of legislation that the General Assembly has passed just for the benefit of the town of Front Royal. It overrides the state code, uh, unless the state code specifically, state code or state constitution specifically states uh, uh, any charter provision notwithstanding, this state code provision or this constitutional provision controls. So um, uh, it is our constitution, uh, just like the United States Constitution uh, controls, and if uh, Congress passes a law or the General Assembly passes the law that conflicts with the state constitution or the uh, uh, federal constitution, either one, uh, the uh, statute uh, must fall. Um, hey Doug, before you go, one, yes, one thing. Uh -huh. If we pass an ordinance today, say, say Monday night we pass an ordinance that right. should be this should be in, in our charter, but we we got to go through the process to get it there. Right. Does that if we pass that, does that actually at that point become part of the charter? No. Or okay, it just sets there until we decide to change the whole charter. Right. But it does it have any legality? As yes, far if as it's our in the ordinance authority. As long as uh, the ordinance is consistent with state code and state constitution, and the federal constitution, of sure. course, uh, the ordinance <coughs> is valid. Okay. That's because uh -huh. we have a lot of those that. You know, every year we'd have to change it every six months. Correct. More than likely. And uh, when I say it's consistent with the state code, as long as it doesn't violate the Dillon Rule. Um, uh, uh, Joe touched on that. The Dillon Rule says that um, localities have only those powers that are expressly given localities or those powers that are necessarily implied. Um, and that's a powerful limitation on what localities can and cannot do. Um, and there are uh, 26 um, uh, Dillon Rule states. There's 24 what are called Home Rule states. Home Rule states say that localities have all the powers that the state uh, expressly does not uh, take away from them. And you would think, well, why? wouldn't we want to be a home rule state? Well, somebody did a, uh, an analysis a few years back to find out if there was any difference in the actual powers of localities, and they found out, interestingly, there's virtually no difference in the powers of localities in whether you're a Dillon rule state or a home rule state, because the um, state legislature over the years is going to um, make sure that localities, no matter where you are, virt have virtually the same powers. So it doesn't really matter what, what you call yourself. Yes, Bill. Could you give me an example of where we be, where we would be in violation of the Dillon Rule? Uh, let's uh, think of one. Um, well, uh, an example would be if we decided to um, uh, amend our code where the mayor 
uh, would uh, take over all of the day-to-day -day operations of the town, manage the day-to-day -day operations, and we would eliminate the powers of the town manager. That would be a violation of the Dillon Law. Uh, because the state code says that you shall have a town manager, uh, you shall have a town attorney, and you shall have a town clerk. And these are their powers. And if you decided that you wanted to unilaterally eliminate that and make the mayor, or you wanted to you, say you wanted to have the uh, town council run the day-to-day -day fairs of the town, you all would meet. Let's say you were all independently wealthy, or you all were all retired, and you all just loved this position so much, you all wanted to meet every day. I did too. Yeah, you wanted to meet every day and come in here and you all wanted to manage, micromanage each and every town department. You all don't need department heads. You all would be it. Well, we got enough council people to do it. Yeah, well, why not? And, and that, that way you wouldn't need to hire people. You wouldn't need to hire department heads. You'd just do it yourselves. And you're all rich, you know, and uh, you would do it that way. Well, you can't. All right. Time of meetings. Um, uh, the regular meetings, uh, these are the regular meetings are the meetings where you vote. Uh, that's when um, uh, uh, the uh, public is notified that these ordinances that you are uh, specific ordinances or specific actions that you propose to take are coming up for public discussion and vote. And they are held on the second and fourth meetings of each month at seven o'clock. Regular meetings typically are held in the government center, across from the post office. Um, however, there's only one regular meeting in December, and that's on the second Monday of that month, so it doesn't interfere with the Christmas holidays. Uh, you can have special meetings. Uh, special meetings can be either a work session or have the authority of a regular meeting. Um, and um, the uh, mayor calls those uh, special meetings. Usually special meetings are held when you have specific items, uh, maybe a, a, an emergency ordinance. doesn't have to be an emergency ordinance, but something that comes up, you can't wait. Let's say that something came up in the, uh, uh, later in December and you couldn't wait until January for whatever reason, and you wanted to take that up right then. Um, uh, if a regular... Uh, Council meeting um, falls on a town holiday, then you uh, bring it up on the following day. Same thing if it's uh, inclement weather on a regular meeting date, uh, you can bump it to the next date or the, uh, by vote uh, of town council, you all can actually move it to another date uh, other than that. But uh, automatically, unless you uh, specially move it uh, to a, a special date, it kicks over to the next uh, next Tuesday. Um, Are we required to have two work sessions a month? Um, I think you all, uh, under Robert's rules, if you all vote to eliminate a work session, I think it's got to be unanimous uh, because it's in the code that you have to have work sessions. So I would think, I'd have to look at that, but I think it would have to be unanimous to uh, uh, get rid of that. I'd have to look because it is in the town code. You have to have two. Second question then. Two uh, what is the, like, we had several meetings where the agenda was so minute that it's almost like we said, we're here and goodbye. Yeah, you still have to have the meetings because the public uh, had, in the press have been notified that we're having a meeting. And the public uh, might have an item that it wants to take up with town council that you aren't anticipating. And uh, it may be something that you didn't even know about. And uh, what the uh, uh, public may bring up might turn out to be something that is urgent. And so, uh, yeah, you gotta, you got to hold it. Uh, Joe, are you sure about the two fork sessions <coughs> that's in our... In our uh, I, I, I think, think it's so. in there. I haven't looked, but I think it's in there. It may be. I don't remember ever proving to uh, that have, we, we always usually do it. I didn't think it was part of our I was thinking code. it was on the first and third. Check on that. If you don't yeah, know. I will, but I think it's there. I know the council meetings are, yes. Yeah. Does that same rule apply to work sessions? 
Well, if you don't have any business, uh, you can uh, 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 adjourn it uh, if there's no uh, business uh, to actually be there. I mean, but as far as I know, uh, uh, um, if it's, I'll look. But I, uh, I mean, I haven't been asked that question before until right now. But I, I think well, I have been asked on several occasions last year, mm -hmm. and I, I, I figure my time's valuable. Right. I think that came up on a regular meeting. Right? Yes. Yeah. I, I haven't looked it up specifically. But going back to, to Bill's question, you know, mm -hmm. if there isn't anything on the work session, mm -hmm. that means we got to we got to show up and then just leave, mm -hmm. basically. Okay. Because, like I said, I, I don't ever recall, unless it was over a couple of years that I wasn't at meetings that we had approved the work session ever ever other week. I just, I don't remember that. Do I guess, Gene, it's kind of public knowledge that... Well, I know public we knowledge is one thing, though, but is it in our code that we have to do that? Oh, look, but... That's what I'm saying. I think what the rule will be is that if there's nothing to be conducted in a work session and town council agrees, uh, with, and the mayor agrees not to hold a work session, and you publish a notice that the work session will be canceled, it can be canceled. But that's got to be done a week prior to the time of the meeting, though. Yeah. But I think, you know, normally you, you, in the town code, it's got when the agenda for the work session has to be set up. That's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. Well, typically in work sessions, we usually have a good, good amount to talk about. There's usually always yeah. stuff in it's the work session. It's when we go through formal bang, 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 and we're out of there in 10 minutes. Yeah, the work sessions, frankly, is when most things are uh, decided by consensus, and a lot of things that you uh, discuss in the work session, you decide, look, there's not enough agreement here that we even want to take any formal action on this. Well, the reason I say that is because when I was working as public works director, there were numerous times we never had no meetings at all for a month on work session. And then all of a sudden, it became a point, uh, probably after we became on the council in 2000, that it almost we met every other ever every I guess two it was weeks for work. prerogative when we came on that the Mr. Athey, Clay Athey was. Yeah, but I just wanted though if we if we, do we have it in a code saying we have to do it. Now, I know we do the the county council meetings, but if we don't have to have it in our actual coding, then we're I'm like Bill, we're not required to be here. Well, what what I think it yeah. says it, it it implies that you're supposed to because it has a provision in the town code as to when items are supposed to be presented for the work sessions to the mayor. And the mayor puts it on the agenda and, and the dates that's supposed to be. Uh, I don't think there's anything in the town code that says, like it is for a regular meeting, mm -hmm. that it shall be held on the first and third. Mm -hmm. it, there's the implication that it's supposed to be held on the first and third. Because that's the way that it says that it, the agenda is supposed yeah. well, to be presented. Like I said, I was here 25 years and it, it was never a set, because like, like I said, there were many months, we never even had a work time. Yeah, but you know, the business of the town has gotten a lot busier. Well, I understand that. But so I, what, what I'm saying, I guess, is what I think mm -hmm. is that if you get to a point, since the town code is probably, it implies you're supposed to have a work session, but it doesn't say you have to. If you get to a point where there's nothing to be presented on the agenda, even though the agenda is supposed to be um, uh, fixed by the mayor a week ahead of time, well, if you don't have anything to put on there, if you all agree that you want to dispense with the uh, work session, as long as you publish it to the public and the uh, How the soon? I mean, no, we do. We get to get on the agenda, we have to be on Wednesday prior to the meeting. Right. Now, if we go and, and, and Jennifer puts it on the. Pardon? It's a Wednesday, I think. I think it's a Wednesday. No, Wednesday, Wednesday. Wednesday's too far out. Staff could not have enough time to... We implemented it <coughs> Thursday. Right, Did we, 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 we try we, yeah. we try to get Still all the... Still Tuesday. Still okay. Tuesday. Still Tuesday, but it... But we it comes out it. on Wednesday. Though. Right, it comes out... Well, right now it's coming out on, on Thursdays, Thursday. right. right around lunchtime, because staff needs all this time once we determine what's going to be on the agenda on Tuesday, and then we have to build all the backup information. And the reason we pushed it to Thursday was there was some debate maybe six, eight months ago that we did not have all the material available when we issued the agenda. So that's why we delayed it for another day so that we could get as much information that when council received an agenda, it would have every, every information available at that time. But what I was getting ready to say, though, if say that uh, 
we don't have anything on that Wednesday to bring up, and, and we decide as a council we don't need a meeting. How many days do we have to advertise to the public? Uh, tell the when do we have to tell the public to that point where where can we do can we do it on a Friday or a Saturday prior to the meeting or how does that I mean, uh, does it have to be that week? Re, there's no drop dead date. It's reasonable notice under the circumstances. Okay. okay. Reasonable notice under the circumstances. Okay. The incumbent weather is a prime example. Five yeah. o'clock, the mayor may call up and say, "Oh yeah, the meeting because yeah. of the incumbent weather." I mean, right. it's it's. Uh, Unless the law fixes a certain date, it's always reasonable under the circumstances. Well, that's why I asked both questions for clarification. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't have a, a substantial agenda, mm -hmm. then I want to know exactly on our work se session, uh, can we on, say, Wednesday at noon, say, next uh, Monday's work session will be canceled? On a work session, if, if you all agree, I'll, I'll firm this up. I'll give you a written opinion on it. Uh, with backup law, but I'm saying here now, off the top of my head, my opinion is that as long as the council is a, 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 a board, if you will, agree and the mayor agrees, and you don't have anything that you want to discuss, and you give notice to the press, re reasonable notice, reasonable notice to the press and the public that you don't have any business to discuss and you want to cancel it. Yes. One thing that, that I have, uh, and, and I don't have a problem with it because Joe and I usually try to find extra stuff to put on the agenda to make it well worth the time because if you don't have it this Monday, you're going to have double the next Monday. Yes. And when you start getting into those four and five hour meetings, uh, council's not going to like that. They've, they've done it and they don't like it. They don't get to watch Monday Night Football. <laughs> okay, that's one of that was one of the reasons. Well, but, but I think that. Uh, <coughs> go ahead, Joe. Oh, I was just going to say something <coughs> we did last year was being some of the normal meetings were very light. We ended up including a work session yes. following it to get more for. To, to help. Get to benefit the. Uh, benefit the yeah. time the council was in. Yeah, and that was a good, a good move to do. And not always we can do that, but we right. do try to uh, kind of, manage. You know, we have a. A good work session and we have a good council meeting they're not long drawn out public comes they're not held up for hours waiting on something and I've attended the Board of Supervisors and they're very cumbersome they're very long they're like A to Z and so uh, I think we hold very very good meetings yeah I'll point out having been the county attorney for years before I came over here the county seldom Board of Supervisors seldom has work sessions they conduct their work sessions as part of the regular meetings, and uh, as the mayor points out, their meetings are lengthy, and uh, they basically have two a month, I believe it is still, and uh, so they go on for hours, and uh, one meeting is a daytime meeting in the morning, and the other one's an evening meeting, and uh, a lot of their meetings, I've sat through them until nearly two o'clock in the morning, and um, that's, that's tough especially when you're going to be in work the next day. You know, and thinking of people that are on council that need to leave town to go to work early in the morning, yes, we need to we need to adjourn as soon as possible. Bill and I and Jeannie, we can meet every day and run the town, but... Just there you go. <laughs> <laughs> now that interferes with my golf. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, ordinances uh, in the town code are read at two... Um, separate meetings. What that means is you vote on it twice. It's brought up and you vote on it twice. That is not a state requirement as I said before. That's a town code requirement. Um, a lot of towns and cities don't do that. A number of them do. I, when I first got here I thought that was um, unnecessary. The longer I've been here the more I think that it's probably a good idea. It takes a little bit longer. But, it, it, you know, sometimes the public comes up and brings you out at public presentations because you've got a uh, public hearing first, and if uh, you don't uh, vote the way on the first reading that they think you should, uh, typically what people think, uh, well, um, town council must not have heard them, so at the public presentation, they yell louder, and, um, and it drags out the meeting. Um, and, uh, you know, I can cite you a number of examples. You can think of them yourselves. 
but um, that's sort of the price we pay for uh, uh, democracy. Uh, and I think it's better to let people get that off their chest, frankly. Uh, you don't want people to bottle it up and then later on you have them. Festers. It festers, exactly. exactly right. And then you get people uh, picketing in front of town hall and writing all these nasty articles, uh, letters to the editor and blogs and, and uh, Facebook. So I think it's better just to get out of it, get it done. And for the last two years, we have experienced none of that because we have worked for the citizens. Right. And it's the same thing in the courtroom. The best thing a judge can do is not to shut people down uh, when they want to uh, argue their case is let them be heard. People can accept losing as long as they feel like they got a fair hearing. They got they were heard. They can accept whatever the outcome is. So I think it's the best thing. Um, an ordinance uh, is uh, can be either enacted immediately after the reading, uh, second reading, or if you want to postpone it for a reasonable period of time to uh, cogitate and mull it over, you can do that. Now, you can't sit on it for two years, but if you want to sit on it for 30 or 60 days, you can. I wouldn't go any further than that. Uh, the case law uh, basically says you've got a, maybe a 60-day window. If you go beyond that, it gets stale. You have to hold a new public hearing, and my advice is don't go there unless you Desperate. Sometimes council members will make a motion to table. That means it moves no further. Actually, it, it, they say table, but it should be postponed. Yes. Yeah. Table it technically means that you're supposed to uh, sort of kill it. Yes. And uh, so don't do that. Um, if it uh, on the first reading, if it doesn't get an affirmative vote, that kills it. If you if it uh, doesn't get a majority vote at the first reading, that's it. It's dead. Um, and uh, if it fails, well, I shouldn't say it's dead, uh, but it, it's dead unless somebody who um, voted uh, on the majority to kill it. Affirmative. Yes, affirmative vote uh, agrees to bring it back up. Within, um, otherwise, it can't be brought up for 12 months. After 12 months, it becomes a new item. But it only, only can be brought up by the person in the affirmative. Correct. A person who voted no cannot bring it up just as his own discretion. Right. But if you're in the uh, negative side, the losing side, and uh, you really feel strong that it should have won, you can go to somebody who voted on the affirmative side and uh, <coughs> Gene voted on the affirmative side and Tasha says, you know, Gene, I think that's really wrong. We need to bring this back up and discuss it. I've got some new evidence new information that I think may change everybody's mind. We've got some new constituents out here. I think you need to hear from them. And Gene says, you know, Tasha, I I'm willing to listen to it. I'm willing to bring it back up. Well, that's how you, that's politics. Um, the exception to that is um, emergency ordinances can be adopted um, at the first reading if four members concur. Um, and an emergency ordinance is one that's uh, uh, required for the immediate preservation of the public peace, property, health, welfare, safety, or morals. If it's um, a snow emergency, flood emergency, or something, and the town council <coughs> has to change the town code or do something that's got to be done right now, and you don't have time to go through two readings and all that stuff, you can do it right now. And uh, emergency ordinances take effect immediately. Uh, uh, Robert's Rules of Order um, are your uh, actual governing rules, um, besides the uh, town code, town charter, code of Virginia, and constitution of Virginia. <laughs> Typically, uh, things that uh, town council wants to discuss uh, are taken up at a work session first, prior to be taken up at a regular meeting. Um, the exception to that would be things that are so um, almost rubber stamped that it really doesn't need to be discussed, or if it's something that's uh, uh, just too important and it's got to be taken up in a hurry. Um, 
I'm going to ask the mayor and town manager to add an item. If you're a regular council member, um, at, ask them to bring it up to work session agenda by Tuesday at noon prior to the next uh, work session agenda. Um, Mayor votes only in the event of a tie of town council. The mayor presides at all meetings and work sessions. And the mayor is the ceremonial head of town council. So the mayor uh, is the fellow that gets to uh, uh, get all the glory. All right.